Namaskar to all of you. And uh, can we have a few seconds of silence? Oh. So I'm a student of Sanskrit right from my childhood, educated by my grandfather, uh, whose advice to me was not to give up Sanskrit any time in life. And the second advice of him was uh, not to do a job. In the sense, मुझे उन्होंने बोला था कि किसी का नौकर मत बनना. संस्कृत मतलब स्वतंत्रता. अगर संस्कृत पढ़ना है, तो संस्कृत को इस तरह पढ़ो. और जो भाषा जीवन को बनाएगा. But we often got uh, bullied by our friends. The Sanskrit students, teachers, they suffer a lot. क्या करोगे संस्कृत पढ़ के? मेरे पिताजी, मेरे भाई, ये सब कोलकाता में ही प्रीष्ट हैं। पूजा पाठ करना, मंदिर में पुरोहित बनना, ये सब हमारे पूरा गांव का, पूरा फैमिली का बिजनेस है। तो मुझे भी लोग बोलते थे संस्कृत पढ़के तुम भी और एक पंडित बनोगे। But now you have got a bright example here. What is the power of Sanskrit? है ना? तो जरूरी नहीं कि संस्कृत पंडित बनना, संस्कृत टीचर बनना। You can be something. And I took it as a challenge that no, my future is in my hand, and Sanskrit is the force behind. And today I am where I am because of the blessings of the Rishi tradition. What I realized throughout my academic career that this education system through which every one of us we are going through, it does give us a lot of information, but it doesn't make our life. Hamarva sab kuch hai. Everything we have, but we don't know who we are, how to manage ourselves. I'll tell you a beautiful story, my favorite story. It's a dialogue between uh, two camels, a baby camel and a mom camel. The baby camel asks the mom camel, Mom, can I ask you a few questions? I said, yes, why not? So tell me, why do we have this big haunch? He said, you don't know. I mean, we are desert animals and then we have it. This is a water storage system. So it supplies water to us. I said, okay. Can I ask you the second question? He said, yes. Why do we have thick eyelashes? He said, it's, it's again for the same reason that we are desert animals and uh, becomes a protection for sand centering into the eyes. I said, okay. Can I ask you the third question? I said, yes. Why do we have rounded hooves? I mean, it's covered. It's not split hooves. Camel ka jo hoof hai, wo flat hai. Yes. So he said, it's again for the same reason. Like if we have split hooves, then it won't help us walking on the sand. He said, okay, mom, I understand these three things now. We have hunch because it's a water storage system. It helps us getting water in the desert. We have thick eyelashes which protects our eyes in the desert. We have rounded hooves which helps us walking on the sand. But mom, I do not understand one thing. What the hell are we doing in the zoo? That's basically our education system does to us. We have such beautiful things within us. Look at our mind, human mind. Inadjustable power. And how much of that the education system helps us manifesting? No. We have such beautiful qualities within us. How much the education system is helping us to manifest? And all those who have grown, it's because of their personal efforts and personal sadhana. 
that much i can say it doesn't mean that education systems educational organization should not be there it should be there but it has to change its outlook the same way i have seen the sanskrit education that happens even today it has to change its perspective has to change there are so many beautiful things which can be done recently i conducted a four days confluence of avadhanis how many here have heard the word avadhani so three people in this main hall if you take the 140 crore people in india not even 1% knows about what avadhanam is you can as he said na just pick up one single word and you can have your lifetime research on that patanjali says ek shabd single word samyak gyata thoroughly you know it suprayukta apply it this application part is missing we know so many things but we don't know how to apply it into life and i am a application oriented person so ek shabd samyak gnata suprayukta see patanjali writing in 400 bc suprayukta if it is not applied it doesn't yield any result suprayukta swarge loke cha kama dhuk bhavati it yields result not just in this world but in other worlds also if you believe there are other worlds where you get more happiness so there also this shabda this understanding will help you just take this one single word single concept avadhana and if you ask me to speak about sanskrit and its application many uses what is the power of sanskrit i mean i can go on lecturing you for months together as there is no end to it I and mean, all those who have studied sanskrit they realize that force but i'll pick up few things which helps us ek shabd that one single word avadhanam now avadhana you have not heard only three people in the hall how many of you heard the word savadhana all of you savadhana savadhana is nothing but sa avadhana right sa avadhana sa means like you say sa parivar parivar ke sath sa parivar theek hai not not own not sva sa sa parivar ki sa sah parivar sa parivar aaiye parivar ke sath aaiye to avadhan ke sath savadhan to hum logo ne savadhan to sun liya par avadhan usse sa hata do to ye hamare education system ka aur ek problem hai snippet learnings स्निपेट लर्निंग से कुछ नहीं होने वाला है यू हैव हैव द होल लर्निंग टुडे वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इंटरडिसिप्लिनरी वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इट वी आर रिसर्चिंग इनटू इट वी आर एनफोर्सिंग इट वी आर हैविंग पॉलिसीज टू इंप्लीमेंट इट बट आवर नॉलेज सिस्टम बाय डिफॉल्ट इज इंटर डिसिप्लिनरी कालिदास इज साइमल्टेनियसली एन एस्ट्रोनॉमर एस्ट्रोलॉजर अ साइंटिस्ट अ पोएट अ लैंग्वेज लवर अ लिंग्विस्ट अ ग्रामरियन you cannot separate one subject from the other subject it's very difficult our knowledge system by default is interdisciplinary we need to understand this and teach it in its right manner if you are simply teaching sanskrit as a language you will fail sanskrit will not do much but link it with so many things okay now savadhanam is with avadhana savadhan ka matlab kya hai careful be attentive attention ke sath theek hai a lot ke sath so khali avadhan ka matlab kya hoga attention theek hai in india we have an art form there are more than 200 art forms in india and it's the richest compared to other civilizations avadhan is an art form is old art form right from the vedic age but india is not familiar with it it has never been a part of education system in the avadhan sangama 
we had a panel discussion where i proposed that avadhanam should be made a part of our curriculum every pathyakrama should have a little portion on avadhanam children in india should know about it more than that the principles of avadhanam should be translated in such a manner that the cognitive abilities of the children avadhan has tremendous power to develop the cognitive abilities once you know what an avadhan is and then what an avadhani does you will be amazed unbelievable well, i had heard about it in 2000 in the year 2000 for the first time i experienced when i organized one avadhanam program in pondicherry so someone did ashta avadhanam eight fold concentration unbelievable unless and until you see it you cannot believe your eyes even after seeing also you cannot believe your eyes did it happen or it was a dream that mesmerizing art i'll just give you in the avadhan sangam last week uh, we organized in tirupati i had invited it happened for the first time there are various kinds of avadhanam the 15 20 different varieties of avadhanam but people are familiar with only one type of avadhanam so we had a ghanta avadhani we had a netra avadhani we had a sangeeta geya dhara we had uh, uh, amarakosha avadhana we had tala avadhana varieties of avadhanas we called we invited and they gave the performance i'll just explain you uh, two avadhanam here uh which doesn't need language and then i explain you what role a language plays and what role sanskrit has and how sanskrit as a language the design is such that it helps in a very natural way developing our cognitive abilities the power of concentration the power of memory creativity original thinking our linguistic ability our power of expression these are the things which we are not doing in the classroom refining our senses all these things can be done through the language teaching because the design of the language is that so now in the ghanta avadhan what happens there are two people who are expert in ghanta avadhani uh, audience someone from audience can give a, a sentence say satyam eva jayate that is given to number 1 avadhane who is sitting with a uh, dish and a spoon okay so he reads he or she reads then she places the spoon hits the spoon on the dish in a particular manner the other avadhane listens and decodes and we gave the avadhani in 15 different languages 15 different languages odia telugu sanskrit french someone gave a french sentence it doesn't matter what the language may be so phonetically it is transmitted to the other person and just imagine the kind of attention careful attention needed concentration and silence needed to master and we have many many master avadhanis the same way you have a netra avadhan that means in the similar manner you give a chit to the number 1 avadhani so she will look in different manner and transmit phonetically what is written on the paper and the other person will decode and then tell the exact sentence yeah netra bhasha so that's how our ancient seers and sages could understand the language of birds language of animals language of the nature it needed a deeper connection and when it comes to the kavitva avadhana which is the highest kind of avadhanam that ever exists in the world i'll just give you one example like how avadhanam happens and then how sanskrit is the language where this kind of feat is possible in no other language it's possible i mean there are you know maximum kavitva avadhanam happening in telugu and kannada but there are certain items which will not be possible even in uh, telugu and kannada or any other uh, you know indian languages 
सो इन अवधानम कवित्व अवधानम से वी टेक एग्जाम्पल अष्ट अवधानम द अवधानी द मास्टर परफॉर्मर इज सिटिंग इन द मिडल एंड इज सराउंडेड बाई एट पीपुल द होल गेम टेक्स प्लेस इन फोर राउंड द अवधानी सिट्स जस्ट लाइक दैट with lots of challenges he has no paper no pen nothing he is just sitting like that the entire game takes place in four rounds why four rounds because he has to answer by creating extempore poetry in sanskrit all answers have to be extempore in poetical form and poetry in sanskrit means four metrical lines together in each round he will create only one line for the first questioner in the next round no one is asking him questions he will remember what was the question what was the first line he created and then continue from there to give the second line in the second round third line in the third round and fourth line is the fourth round this is one condition second condition is there are eight different types of questions asked to him and three questioners they put such challenges that he gets anyone would get distracted okay one out of the last three questioners is known as vyastakshari vyasta akshara vyastakshari means like letters jumbled up suppose i have a words in my mind the verse has got 32 characters 32 syllables i note it down my syllable number 1 is this number 2 number 3 number 3 like this when the performance is going on the questioner intermittently will say avadhani mahoday i have a verse in my mind the 17th letter of which is kram then after some times he will say the second letter is pha or the 32nd letter is this in a disorderly manner the avadhani has to listen remember rearrange and tell at the end what was the verse in the mind of the questioner while attending to other questions second there will be a person sitting with a bell intermittently he will keep ringing the bell dang after some times again the avadhani has to listen remember and tell at the end how many times the bell rang while he was performing there's a last person known as aprastut prasang now just see aprastut prasang in every one of us life in the life of every one of us we have many aprastut prasangas around this is a master distractor he has the freedom to intervene at any time he will say avadhani mahoday did you have a love marriage or arranged marriage <laughs> he will completely distract him to some other domain in which tv channels you are interested in do you have any connection with stalin udayanathan did you inspire him <laughs> anything to distract him in spite of these challenges the avadhani succeeds and there are many successful ashtavadhanis and one of the examples i'll give you there is a pers- there is a question there is an item which is known as a nishidhakshari nishidhakshari is not possible in any other indian language because of the lack of vocabulary which i will come i'll discuss about it the power of sanskrit vocabularies so now here the conditions are this questioner will ask the avadhani avadhani mahoday now the indic chinmay indic fest is going on and uh, it was a vision of gurudev chinmayanand ji and so please describe it in anushtup meter the subject is specified the meter is specified but there is another condition the avadhani cannot compose you know like a single line all together like chinmaya nandam namami aham not like this he has to compose syllable by syllable he will just give one syllable and wait for the questioner to anticipate what word he is he has in his mind 
and the questioner will prohibit the use of the next letter. Suppose he starts with chi, then he will say nama, you can't say. Then he has to find another word, another word, another word. Extremely difficult. And there are master, the avadhanis are so, you know, uh, tactful in doing the Shridhakshari. They have 10 different words fitting into the subject and the meter and the Vyakarana. He has to keep the grammar of the language in the mind, the poetry, the meter, the subject, and there are so many distractions. So like this, you have successful Ashtavadhanis. Ashtavadhanam is a performance of two hours. You have successful Shatavadhanis. Hundred. For two days, it goes on. In the evening of the second day, the Shatavadhani will be able to reproduce all that happened in the first and second day. There are successful Sahasravadhanis. Thousand. And it goes on for twenty days. On the twentieth day, he will be able to reproduce from his memory all that happened in the last 19 days, all that he composed, all the questions asked to him with so many distractions. Is it not amazing that in India, they are not just, you know, uh, displaying their memory power, but their power of concentration, creativity, poetic ability, language, and the knowledge of Shastras. Questions can be from any Shastra. Just imagine, we have very few avadhanis living now. Very few avadhanis. Nothing much happens with avadhanam. So, now what are the most powerful or the fundamental uh, aspects of avadhanam? There are five dhakara. Pancha dhakara. And this pancha dhakara they are not just applicable to Abadhanam, but whole of the Indian civilization. The whole of the Sanskrit knowledge system, Sanskrit language. And Sanskrit has the power to manifest this Pancha Dhakara. The first one is a Dhara. Dhara. Dhara is an uninterrupted, spontaneous flow. Today, modern psychology is talking about flow. Go and search what is flow. And for so many thousands of years, we have been talking, not talking, we have been living what is flow. The uninterrupted, spontaneous, poetic flow. The words are flowing. The bhava is flowing. Everything is uninterrupted. In the Avadhanam, Avadhana Sangam, we had one Sangeeta Geya Dhara. Unbelievable. A subject is specified, a raga is specified, a tala is specified. There are musicians who, who will start playing that raga. And the master of Adhani has to compose a song and then sing along. No pause. This is flow. Dhara. Next is dharana. Dharana samarthya is the power of reception, retention, and reproduction. Grahana, Dharana, Smarana. All three are included in a Dharana. Okay. And Dharana has, his, has its own specific meaning also. But in Dharana, so Dhara, Dharana, then you have Dhishana. Dhishana means the, the most powerful intelligence. Avadhan is our master intellect. Dhara, Dharana, Dhishana. Then Dhorani. Dhorani is the style, the diction. I'll talk about it, style. The Avadhanis are master, you know, they have mastered their style in such a manner. All kinds of poetic compositions. But when I talk about the Dhorani, the various ways of expression, the styles and diction, there's one we have composition called Sutra, style of composition. Like you have Chanakya Sutra. So what is this Sutra? We'll talk about that. So Dhara, Dharana, Dhishana, Dhorani. And the last one is Dhairyam, Dhirata. Without Dhirata, life is 
just unsteady. You have to have dhirata at every level, at the physical level, at the emotional level, at the psychological, mental level, at the spiritual level. And who is a dhira? There are many people who can uh, appear to be dhira. Kalidasa has a beautiful, you know, uh, expression. He says, Vikara heto sati vikriyante yeshamna chetansi tayeva dhira. The question is, like, koi dhir hai, to usko, puchko da ki usko saayad mauka nahi mila hai abhi. मौका मिलने पर भी जो शांत रहते हैं निश्चल रहते हैं विचलित होने की सारी संभावनाएं होने पर भी जो विचलित नहीं होते हैं वो धीर है नहीं तो हम एक सिचुएशन पे धीर है पर जब मौका मिल जाता है सारी धीरता खत्म हो जाती है होता ही नहीं होता है so vikar hetu sati vikriyante i mean as i said like single word a single expression a single subhashita in sanskrit literature it can transform the whole life it's such a transformative language so dhairyam it's not just to tolerate endure but nischalata there's a beautiful text called atma puja upanishad if you are not familiar with then you can go to uh, our website upanishads.org.in I have put that Atma Puja Upanishad with my own translation, English translation. We do the Shodasa Upachara Puja. That's the outer Puja. Now suppose I see myself in something. How do I worship the Atma Puja? There's a beautiful thing like we offer Asanam, Padyam, Argyam, Pushpam, Naivedyam, Chandanam, Gandham. So everything we offer. So what does it mean in the context of Atma Puja? So there I am connecting it with Dhairyam. What is Dhairyam? So he says, what is Asanam? Patanjali says, Thiram Sukham Asanam. It's not that you are comfortable, but you are avichal. It's not a physical stability, but mental, psychological, emotional, sensational stability. If you have not achieved the emotional, sensational, mental, psychological stability, mere physical stability is, or mastery is not going to happen. There's a beautiful story again, I'll tell you. There's a Zen master who has mastered everything. And uh, once uh, an archer, he was brought. And he is a master archer. You give him any challenge that send the arrow, it should stop here, not hit the person. He will do that. He has achieved that mastery. All kinds of challenges. He displayed in front of the Zen master. Then people asked the Zen master, how is it, sir? So he didn't say anything. So he snatched the bow and arrow and then walked to a cliff. You know, this... There are two cliffs, two small hillocks and very deep abyss. And there is a very unsteady log which is connecting both. So he went there, stood in front and started displaying the same thing what he did, the archer did. And then invited, come and stand here and then do it. He was shivering, I can't do that. The, the log is unsteady. He said, I am grounded on the ground. <laughs> But I can't be standing there and then do it. Why? Because he has not achieved that nishchalata in the entire consciousness. That is dhairyam. Dhairyam, that dhirata, that nishchalata, that's why Atma Puja Upanishad says, and that is thiram sukham asana. Then you have the sthirata. Atma Puja Upanishad says, nishchala jnanam asanam. If there is nishchalata, in your understanding, if you are still in your jnana, in the deepest knowledge, that is the true asana. Your settled knowledge, sthita pragnata. In the Gita's language, it is sthita pragnata. If someone is not sthita pragnata, 
sitting in a particular posture for years together is not going to give liberation. It is not Buddha's posture which gave him nirvana. It is not a particular posture, but to be settled within. And that's where Sanskrit leads. So you have Dhara, Dharana, Dhishana, Dhorani and Dhairya. These five determine the principles of our civilizational foundation. It's such a strong foundation our rishis built. And today we have forgotten our rishis. Ask the children about Bharadwaj, about Vishwamitra, about Chanakya. Chanakya, of course, they will know. But they will not know who is Dirghatama, who is Valmiki, Vyas, Panini. You know, like I ask students, young students, have you heard Panini? They said, yes, we have eaten Panini. Now they are more familiar with the dish panini, the Italian Japanese dish, okay, but not panini, the master grammarian. How many of you have heard panini as the father of grammar? Very good. And why he is called father of grammar? But before panini, there were so many grammarians. After panini, also there are so many grammarians. Why he is known as? the father of grammar. He wrote down the biggest grammar book in the world. The biggest grammar book. What is the biggest grammar book you have seen so far in any language, in English or any language? How many pages? How many volumes? 100 pages. The biggest grammar book. How many pages? 600,000 pages. And Paninis is the largest grammar book in the world. How many volumes it will be? Imagine, how many pages? How many pages? Anyone? 20 pages. <laughs> 20 pages. And you can print it and then keep it in your pocket and then move around. That I am carrying Paninis, the biggest, largest grammar book in the world. How did Panini do that? This is where again, brevity, the sutra. Brevity has been, we don't speak much. It's not necessary to speak much. Sutra mein bata do, bulda na, sab shankshab mein bata do. Short. But, that short message of yours must have immense clarity. Must not create any confusion. Asandikdam. Saravat, that it has to carry the essence of all that one wants to say. Vishwato Mukham, it should have a wider applicability. Just imagine what kind of thought which has gone behind a simple way of expression. Sutra style of composition. Just imagine Panini has encoded the entirety of Sanskrit language in just 20 pages. Today, it is considered to be the first ever software programming which was given by Panini without the help of any hardware. You cannot have a software without hardware, right? But Panini could give that software and it is a flawless programming. Flawless programming that if you, you say, not a single syllable you can change here and there. It is not a, not a single syllable is useless or meaningless. And if you change a single syllable here and there, the entire system becomes corrupt. The entire system becomes corrupt. It's a flawless software programming. That was the mind. That was the mind. Have you heard of Vedanta Deshikan? I'll talk about it a little later. But the Sutra style of composition, Panini could do that. And uh, we were referring to the vocabularies, why certain things are possible in Sanskrit. The vocabularies. Today you have Oxford Dictionary, the latest edition. How many words, how many entries? Anyone? How many entries in the Oxford Dictionary? 2022 volumes. Not more than say 20 lakhs. 
but today if you ask me how many words in sanskrit first thing our ancients will say ananta infinite and it's truly infinite why because panini's grammar is again a generative grammar you can create enormous amount of word the design is that now take for example like as per my calculation panini gives a list of approximately 2000 root sounds in the appendix of ashtadhyay his book is called ashtadhyay and from this 2000 approximately root sounds by applying panini's generative process anyone can create more than 300 millions of words 33 crores of words you can just stand here and then say these are the 300 million words unbelievable but this 2000 basic root sounds provided by panini is just a fraction of the actual number of root sounds i have shown in my book sanskrit and the evolution of human speech that the original language devabhasha contained more than 33000 root sounds more than 33000 root sounds and during panini's time only 2000 root sounds were preserved so that's why you talk about any language in the world the root will be found in sanskrit i'll give you one example there is a root sound in sanskrit called stha from which you get the word sthana sthana means a place sthala sthapatya sthapana pratishtha sthir okay so stha means immobile the fundamental experience with stha means stop so immobility and whatever is immobile is also strong you can apply it to the physical at the physical level at the emotional level at the mental level that you can say that oh he is so strong that i can't move him someone who is stubborn doesn't want to listen he said oh it's very difficult to move him it's very difficult to you know ask him to change his idea he's so stubborn right so now just think of any english word beginning with the s t you can go on yes ending with s t exist having s t in the middle establishment anything so they have this fundamental experience if you understand stha you can understand words of many languages is it not amazing way of learning sanskrit the this is the power of sanskrit this is how it links with all languages of the world we don't need to hate any language say that is supran all languages come from that's why our rishis believed in the divine origin of everything all languages are originated from the divine because if you look at the source look at the principles you cannot but ascribe it to the divine only a supreme power alone is behind who can make it possible so now you just look at the vocabularies immense vocabularies because of which it's possible and then you can create because it is generative grammar you can create enormous amount of words i'll give you one example now see f- for water there are more than 200 words in sanskrit many people say oh sanskrit is very difficult we should remove all these words english is so simple just as one word water aur sanskrit mein 200 shabd kon yaad rakhega but remember all conventional languages are object specific language they are objective language that's why materialism is more important for them object is objective world is more important for them they will not understand the subjective world 
right? Because its language is also objective. Because language shapes our consciousness. So look at their language, how it has shaped their own consciousness. And look at this language. Now here, every word in Sanskrit, Sanskrit doesn't have a single word for any object. You cannot find in the entire Sanskrit vocabulary a single word which is specific to an object. Because the very nature of the language is that it's not an object specific language. Suppose this has this single object has got 10 different properties, 10 different functionalities. You will have 10 different words in Sanskrit. Suppose something has got hundreds of properties, you will have hundreds of words. If you discover a new property, you can create a new word. Right? So it's flexible, it's an open ground. It doesn't restrict. And since it is property based, it links, it makes us aware of many aspects of something. So it's a language of awareness. It's not ending with just introducing you the object. It introduces every aspect of this object, every property of the object. The same way if you look at your body, there are so many words for the body. And if you understand that, then you know who, what is your body. You are more aware of it. There is a body awareness. Today you have very expensive programs, many people doing in the name of body awareness. And what do they do? Whatever they do in the body awareness program, I can explain by using 10 different words in Sanskrit used for body. That's the power of Sanskrit. We don't know how to market it. I can market these 10 words or 3 words and then have a beautiful package for creating body awareness. Now in Ayurveda, and a language is so clear. First thing you have to remember that it's not object specific. It's property based. So it connects, it creates more awareness about ourselves and the surroundings. About which I'll speak in the next session. So how Sanskrit as a language, the very design is helps us in creating a beautiful environment, inner and outer environment. Okay. So now, the body is called, any any single word for body, you remember? Tanu, Deha, Sarira, Chetra, Kaya. Okay, so many words. Ayurveda uses very clearly three words. Deha, Sarira and Kaya. Now see what is the difference between Deha and Sharira. Both, all the words can be used for body. But they have a contextual meaning. Now the word Deha comes from the root sound Dih. Dih. D-I-H. Dih. Every root sound has certain fundamental experiences behind it. And how these experiences came into a particular root sound, that also is possible. To explain, but that needs a deeper session. Okay, I have a whole program called Dhatu Rahasyam, unveiling the secret of root sounds. Where I do it's a six days program where you understand like how a particular root sound has got layers of meanings, where from these meanings come. That's a deeper study. But the the primary experience of the is to gather to collect. Now it's an experiential language in the sense that you will be amazed to see the layers of meanings of a particular root sound or a particular word in dictionary. You will go crazy. You see these ancient people were crazy or what? All unconnected, disconnected meanings are listed in the dictionary. Now the, the first layer of meaning you will find to gather. Next layer of meaning you will find to uh, grow. Next layer of meaning you will find to cover. Can you connect this? Gather, grow and cover. Can you connect initially? Very difficult. But start experiencing. Now, this is a hall. We decided to gather something, collect something. We all are interested in books. We started gathering books. 
what is the most physical experience physically what do we experience immediately when you gather something there was nothing now suddenly things have grown increased so that's the experience that that's why you next level you have grow grow increase enhance develop all kinds of meanings belonging to all levels physical emotional sensational mental psychological spiritual all words will be put together there now growth what does grow, where does growth lead the most immediate physical experience now you all are sitting here i am sitting here things have grown in the middle the first thing is that i don't see you you don't see me you are a beautiful building sit out lake view you went on a vacation came back and found a multi storied building has grown in front of your sit out what happened to your lake view covered so cover block blocking anointing plastering hiding keeping it secret all these different meanings belonging to different levels of existence they will fall under the third category it's all experiential if you start experiencing and learn sanskrit through an experiential mode sanskrit becomes very easy it's not a difficult language okay so now you see the the body is called deha because its property is to grow i am not of the same size as i was born i'm growing if i eat little more don't do any exercise it will grow so the very property of the body is to grow when you are in the growing phase when the body is in growing phase ayurveda will use the word deha then there is a phase where it is static neither it grows neither it nor it diminishes that phase they will use the word no kaya sthir then you have when the aging begins sharira sirna sharira is kshaya diminishing perishing shru the root shru from which you get the word sirna jirna sirna it's perishes so the aging body will be called sharira ayurveda very consciously uses this word is it not amazing that so clearly in sanskrit you have that clarity and what kind of awareness it creates what kind of awareness it creates i gave you the example of water 200 properties 200 words now look at the beauty of word generation now suppose you want to create words for something which is water born in the sense of born you add the root sound ja like panka ja okay now suppose you have 200 words for jala you add ja you get another 200 words for water born you see that it it makes the language very simple and through that you understand the properties and you understand the deeper side of everything every object and it does not link just with the objective world but our subjective experience with the objects that's how the language is created designed it leads towards the swabodha 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 means like you understand the swa swabhava swadharma of everything yourself and the others which is important which is at the center it is because of the swabodha atma bodha atma gnana our rishis they kept this at the center whatever happens if we have to have an education system ask yagyavalkya ask vasishta ask vishwamitra ask valmiki ask vyasa what is that single definition of education of life they will answer using only two words atmanam vidhi know thyself that's all i know everything i have a beautiful life everything goes on but i don't know myself who am i atmanam vidhi atma va are drashtavya srotavya mantavya nididhyasitavya you all are studying vedanta right what is at the center of vedanta again atmanam vidhi how do we understand ourselves there has to be a connection connection of what beginning with the end end with the beginning the real marriage takes place there in union 
हैव यू सीन द वर्णमाला ऑफ संस्कृत इट्स कॉल्ड वर्णमाला नॉट अल्फाबेट फॉर कन्वीनियंस वी यूज संस्कृत अल्फाबेट बट इट्स अ मिस मैच संस्कृत वर्णमाला इन वर्णमाला वट इज द फर्स्ट लेटर वट इज द लास्ट लेटर नो फर्स्ट लेटर इन वर्णमाला इज अ लास्ट लेटर ह ह फ्रॉम अ टू ह ओके यू नो लाइक इन संस्कृत फॉर वन सेल्फ द वर्ड यूज इज अहम दैट वर्ड इज एन एब्रिविएशन आदिरंतेन संयोगात अहमित्ते वजायते यू कनेक्ट द फर्स्ट लेटर विद द लास्ट लेटर देन इट बिकम्स अहम अ मंत्र दैट मीन्स एवरी इंडिविजुअल contains all the sounds between a to ha there is an ajapa japa which is going on with our breaths from a to ha all the letters are getting generated within us only the yogis the siddhas can hear these sounds inside they are not someone created looking at the language okay this is this is the language let's find out the basic sounds and organize it to form an alphabet no that organized alphabet varnamala is seen within and whatever is not seen within the rishis will not manifest it outside the outer is always an expression of the inner if it is not expression of the inner if it is mentally formulated we will be talking about next session i'll talk about the sustainability what is the true sustainability if it is simply mentally intellectually structured pattern it's not be sustainable it has to be the expression of the inner experience the inner realization and for that there has to be a discipline and if you look at the spiritual discipline that has been given to us by our rishi parampara and then look at the design of this language why i point that it's not that whatever is written in sanskrit that we have to see for me the very design of the language is important panini i look at him as a greatest vedanti how beautifully he has blended vedanta into his sutra style of composition i'll give you one example now you see you have the syntax the syntax section how the structuring of the sentence happens we all have if you have studied a little bit of vyakaranam you know about karakam karakam it's called technically called karakam kartrakaraka karma karaka karana karaka so like this you have got six karakas and seven vibhaktis okay case endings the very first one is what let's suppose you have to put in order so you will put first first or seventh first 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 you know first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh but if you go to ashtadhyay the karaka section what would you expect that which karaka should come first the first kartrakaraka but you will be disappointed to see the fifth one coming first panini doesn't put the first one first he puts the fifth first apadana karakam this is how the karaka section begins why does he do that you ask any grammarian they will give you the example from the grammatical perspective from the design of panini's perspective if it is not there then there will be lot of problems in panini's formation of the whole text will be disturbed that's one explanation that's what we studied in the classroom but this question was in my mind that how is it possible that was panini merely putting apadana karaka in the beginning just for the sake of the design of his text or there was something behind but no teacher of mine could answer this question no teacher of mine could answer this question i got the answer while reading the isho upanishad while reading the brahadaranyaka upanishad while reading the entire upanishadic vedantic text 
understanding the principles of creation i said panini how beautifully he has blended the vedanta and the vyakarana together what does the vedanta say about the creation and what is apadana now apadana how panini has defined just see it from the grammatical point of view and from the vedantic point of view panini says like suppose you say take the example brakshat patram patati is a sentence in sanskrit from the tree a leaf falls right so and there is a separation and this separation is known as apadana vishlesha vishlesha is apadana separation is the keynote of apadana but when the separation is happening separation the tree is getting separated from the leaf leaf is also getting separated from the tree where should i apply panchami which one is apadana panini says dhruvam the fixed part is apadana so dhruvam apaye apaya means vishlesha the vicheda separation apadanam the fixed part is apadanam now grammatically this is thing if i look at the vedanta i will see that dhruva dhruvo achala sanatana the eternal on moving from which all movements come the eternal on moving from which all movements come apadana is at the keynote the sanatana achala dhruva has moved from itself to become this multiplicity this creation apadanam is the beginning of the creation without apadanam no creation happens no creation possible so i translate it dhruvam apaya apadanam the eternal on moving separated becomes this creation from which all movings take place now moving ahead the very next sutra in panini's ashtadhyayi is bhitrarthanam bhaya hetu right and look at how deep vedantic philosophy he has blended into vyakarana bhitrarthanam bhaya hetu that means like if you are afraid of something what causes fear in you is also apadana now here i have little contrasting uh, thing i see the very premise you set that apadana separation is the keynote of apadana right now here vyagrat vibhemi where is the separation rather in union i have fear if the very thought of ghost comes to me i am afraid of i am scared if i meet the if i don't meet the tiger so where is the fear only in the union it becomes the fear so where is apadana again another question never answered i got the answer while reading brahadaranya ko upanishad where he says actual bhaya hetu is not vyagra there is something else dutiyad vai bhayam dutiyad vai bhayam bhavati the fear comes from the second entity as long as we are in a divided consciousness the fear is bound to be there the fear comes from the second entity that's why advaita when one is established in oneness unity sameness equanimity where is the fear that's how the rishis would go and then pat the tiger and then you know sit with sleep with no problem oneness ekatva and samatva again now we see how beautifully panini has blended this vedantic realization into the hardcore programming of the grammar that is our knowledge system they never deviated no rishi that's why every shastra here every shastra here is a moksha shastra even the chaurya shastra is also a moksha shastra you know like there is a text called mrutchakatikam mrutchakatikam and there is a description of a brahmin chaura a thief he goes and there is a chauriya shastra which describes how to do you know this chauriyam there is a shastra about it they have their own deity they have their own mangala charanam 
they have their own dharma the chora like the yuddha has its own dharma chora also has its own dharma you will not deviate from that now see the beautiful description there so he says on the first day he goes and sprinkles water where he has to do the hole next day he goes to make the hole at night and then he thinks he uses his yagya pavita as the measuring thread okay then he describes that this this is so helpful being a brahmin and then having a janeu is so helpful okay i don't need to carry a separate then just look at it and he is also an artist or sculptor he says when i make the hole should i make it padma bandha shodasa dala ashta dala or should i make a chakra bandha what will happen he said tomorrow morning when inspectors come to inspect and people come to investigate they will forget about the choriam they will start appreciating the design just look at this is shastra even the chora having this refined consciousness and the sense of aesthetics he said that i want to make them forget that choriya has happened they should fall in love with my design right so many beautiful so every shastra you pick up kama shastra people say oh it is a it is an erotic text what is eroticism can you believe that if a sculptor had this uh, vikruta manas if eroticism is something which distracts us just imagine the sculptors who built konark khajuraho temple if they had little you know distraction could someone build or make bring life to a stone they could bring years of spiritual sadhana is the result of that and that's why you can see deep inside every piece of sculpture it can evoke that sense of spiritual the spiritual power the sense of aesthetics the sense of perfection there is a language there and if you look at a beautiful sculpture if you look at a very good design if you look at even the nature and look at the design of this language beautiful i'll give you one last example then maybe like you can ask questions or thing the yeah, next session okay so question answer is next session but i give you last example this is an example which i recently gave also in the pandilit fest again the vedanta and uh, the design of the language how many of you can have a passive sentence in english for i sleep can you have i sleep can you have a passive sentence for this passive not possible i laugh can you have a passive sentence no why because it is intransitive I mean in the sense that there is no object here right you can have passive only for the transitive verbs right that the same applies to many indian languages also but in sanskrit both for transitive and intransitive you can have a passive sentence passive is so natural to the design of this language why again the design is based on the deeper spiritual realization that's how the rishis have designed passive what does it mean and today if you look at the technology type something in email or in chat gpt or uh, in your uh, whatsapp or anything you type if you have if you are typing a passive sentence immediately the message will come it will red line get the red line that so please change it to active and active is what i do i am indispensable without me the world will not exist that's active aham kartrutva bhav in passive look at the gita but but message prakritya kriyamanani sarvani karmani is the prakriti which does everything done nimitta matram bhava savya sachen be a nimitta be a perfect channel through which the prakriti is prakriti stvam niyokshati you can't you know like uh, go away do away with the uh, fight your swabhav and swadharma prakriti stvam niyokshati the prakriti will force you to do get it done through you and here is a language which has got a maximum passive sentences how language shapes consciousness 
constant use of passive generates, evokes this sense of instrumentality. Is it not beautiful? That you use a language by which a sense of instrumentality goes and the kartrutva bhava disappears. And when you do not have the kartrutva bhava, you are on the right path towards the realization. Because the most important thing to be demolished on the path of spirituality is that kartrutva bhava, that aham bhava, that I do. And that can happen only by self-giving, to grow by giving. That was the foundational principles of the Vedic Rishis, to grow by giving, by demolishing the ego that I don't do, by, by self-giving you demolish the ego. And that's how this language, the very language is designed in such a manner that it facilitates the process of our spiritual journey. Dhanyavad.